Here we go. I love to see a dog work. When, when it's rabbit hunting, it's just fun. I mean, to hear a, a pack of beagles, you know, baying up on a rabbit and, and coming on a creek bank, and you ever heard it, I mean, you'll fall in love with it. On the edge of a wood line or a creek bank and the echoing, and it's just a wonderful sound. Let's go find a rabbit. We went out on a late season rabbit hunt over in East Arkansas, not too far from Humphrey. Hunted some conservation reserve program land as well as some ditch banks along agricultural fields. We were with Clifton Jackson, small game program biologist for Game and Fish, as well as Carlos Houston's kind of our hunt master, and his buddies Nate Avery and Eddie Moore, and of course, uh, Carlos's pack of beagles from 4-H Kennel. Houston's hard hunting hand which uh, I have three gray dogs and two registered dogs. And uh, I'm trying to start my own kennel and maybe just <clears throat> be able to breed dogs that don't have no quit. And also I'm trying to get more people into it. As far as kids and, and the youth, every year I try to give away one puppy out of each litter to just a random person. Just to, you know, to keep the tradition alive, more or less. So I'm trying to get, you know, get to where more people will, will kind of, you know, start rabbit hunting. There's a strong tradition of rabbit hunting across the South and here in Arkansas. You know, it's a really simple thing to do. It doesn't take a lot of equipment. Uh, a lot of people, you know, pass down from one generation to the next, and Carlos is no different. My grandfather, uh, man, when I was probably 12, 13 years old, we used to uh, sit on the end of the field while we cut soybeans, and we would shoot rabbits as they came out. And uh, I was probably 13, like I say, and shot my first rabbit. And uh, it wasn't two weeks later, he bought me a shotgun, 410 pump. And uh, then on, I've been hooked. <laughs> Find that rabbit. We're in a, a CRP patch with trees seven, eight years old. And in, in, in my thinking, that's the prime time to hunt it. Cause you got the grass starting to kind of smother down to where you can see, <clears throat> but it's also still growed up enough to where it can habitat for rabbits. It was a pretty easy hunt and, and I'm glad that the jumping was consistent. And uh, quickly we killed the rabbit, we was able to get right on another. Oh, he coming his way? <laughs> I believe you scored on that one. I thought I got only my second shot. It's no secret you see that we were doing a lot of missing and that is uh, not uncommon on a rabbit hunt because those jokers can move. Especially when they got a pack of beagles on them. You gotta be ready all the time and they always show up, it seems like, 
uh, in a place you're not expecting them to appear. It's, it's almost like uh, trying to catch Yeti. <laughs> I mean, he, he's real elusive and, and uh, he's trying to stay alive once he jumps because he has numerous predators. <laughs> When that rabbit in the bushes, more than likely, I say 90% of the time, he's tipping. And then when I say tipping, he's just moving very gracefully in front of the dog. He's dead over there. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> but when he hit a wide open spot like we were in, oh, he's trying to get to his next brush pile to get away from the dogs and, and like you said, a shooter, which I don't think us shooters had a had him worried too bad because we chunked quite a few shells at him. <laughs> it was a great hunt. Got to make some new friends and Carlos and Nate and Eddie and uh, hunt once again with my friend Clifton from the Game and Fish Commission. But by far the best part of that hunt was listening to those beagles on a hot rabbit. It was a real good day. Uh, I guess for everybody except Nate. Uh, everybody got a chance to uh, blow the dust out the end of the gun and you still got a chance to kill rabbits and hear dogs run, that's a perfect hunt. I mean, it's not about the kill, it's about the thrill and the enjoyment.